Hello everyone and welcome to this time's front end functional group update. Um, I'm very happy to share what we have done in the past weeks and what, our, what is our outlook for the next weeks. Uh, if you have any questions during my uh, hopefully very short presentation, please uh, also jump in and ask questions and I'm also happy to answer questions in the end. So what happened in the front end uh, team in the last weeks? Let's take a look. Uh, so first of all, Q1 ended. So we had our scoring on the OKRs. We were able to uh, fulfill the writing more unit tests easily. Uh, we closed more than our target of 300 uh, bucks. We, had, uh, we, we have done 320 in that time. The deliverable uh, goal of uh, delivering 100% was also okayish. Uh, we improved now again. Uh, we are trying to find our velocity at the moment with uh, a lot of new team members who are already doing a great job to contributing, but it's very hard to uh, find out at the beginning of the month uh, what we can actually ship. And we have doing constant progress to improve that over the next releases. Uh, make sure our front end community contributions are merged. We haven't done uh, we haven't done that for all the uh, community contributions. There were some quite big ones that also will be merged now in 10.8 and one was merged in 10.7. So happy about that, but we definitely need to make a better job also to uh, do especially small ones. The specific technical team that we formed has done a great job to resolve all uh, our big technical debt that we wanted to tackle. So the dispatcher.js, which is basically uh, splitting up everything in the front end code into smaller bundles. Uh, we have done uh, the jQuery upgrade, which was also important. Uh, we are focusing on Vue, but uh, of course, we still have a huge code base part is uh, in jQuery. And this is why it was quite important to upgrade to get performance improvements and also future upgrades there. Um, Jose has done a great job on the site speed Docker containers. So we have continuous uh, progress on our performance monitoring. And we have done four great new hires, which are were onboarded really nicely and are doing, as I said, a great job already. Um, other things, we have something that we call domain experts. We've defined them now. So this should help to, if you uh, want to ask a question about the front end, if you want to know something specific in a specific area about front end code, et cetera, we have now a list of uh, assigned uh, domain experts. So we have Philippa, who uh, is the expert on CICD and the security product. We have Fatih for discussion and merge request use. Uh, Portfolio Kushal, Web ID Phil. And then we have also internal technical topics like security topics, Philippa, testing, Vini, UI components, Clement, Webpack and tooling is Mike at the moment. The idea is to really have simply persons uh, that other pe people from the outside can contact, but that will be also targeted from the inside. So basically they will do estimation and analyzing of new deliverables and should help us to streamline the big bunch of deliverables that we are getting in every month and uh, be simply responsible for that specific area. So you can read up more about that in the handbook. Um, we have something that is also new, is the front-end calendar that Clement created, so with front-end specific uh, calendar items that are happening. Something that we have also targeted in the last FTU is was prettier. Uh, automatic code formatting, a really important thing, and uh, with only a very small hiccup, which was the discussion about line length, and I'm pretty happy that was on our only problem. Uh, we have now automatic code forming. What does this mean? Every time a uh, front-end engineer is saving a JavaScript or view file, automatically the code gets formatted uh, in their editor. Uh, and what uh, we are doing at the moment is that we are not simply prettifying all the code because then we would have huge merge requests. We are doing this uh, like organically uh, and uh, merge request by merge request. And Lucas has done a really fun and great uh, side project on the weekend. And uh, it's, which is, is GitLab pretty yet? So it basically analyzes our current code and takes a look uh, how many of our files are already prettified and uh, what still needs to be prettified. So in C, we are already 42%. Uh, take a look, it's, it's a really nice visualization. Uh, yeah, and by example, Facebook has done the same with the code base. It took them eight months and we have now uh, prettified 10% in the first release cycle. Uh, something else that we are working on is to uh, basically 
manifest all the learnings that we have done over the last month is a new development checklist, which is currently uh, in a merge request. Uh, the idea is to simply have a checklist about things the front end engineers should think about during the planning of a development. So it's not for every tiny bit or small or medium task. This is really for big new features, big new refactorings, is to simply have a checklist like pilots have uh, that uh, everyone can go through and simply be reminded of uh, architecture plans, how to speak to other people, what they need to consider, uh, that they should consider talking to security if there's a new feature, stuff that they should during development like provide uh, GIFs and, and screenshots so that other uh, parties are also involved. So this is like our living document and we are discussing it at the moment. I'm really looking forward about the results uh, that this will give us. Um, yeah, those are the accomplishments and updates. Uh, what else did we do? We did we finished a lot of really great new features, which were, these are simply the ones that were very uh, front-end centric. So Kushal, for example, has done a great job with our EPIC roadmap, which is a really UX and front-end intensive feature. Uh, Phil and Andre have done a great job with the web ID, which is now coming to general availability. So we have diff viewing, we have uh, image viewing, you can open a merge request, simply try it out and give us feedback in the web ID channel. Uh, I think we have come already to a really nice feature set, feature set. and in 10.8 there will be even much more uh, nicer features like finding files with a fuzzy file finder really fast and really nice. Uh, Vini has done a great job on the project and group badges, uh, uh, which is also completely written uh, in Vue. It's a Vue application, which was also something nice to try out. Uh, uh, Philippe has done the security uh, package uh, implementation and the reports in CI. And there are a lot of more other and smaller features. I just wanted to highlight some of the very front-end centric. But uh, yeah, the team has done uh, a great job uh, in my perspective. What is the outlook? Outlook Q2 OKRs, we want to concentrate again, delivering 100% of deliverables and improving that a lot. We want to uh, do something about uh, reusable view components, more on that later. And we want to hire three new developers. Uh, so we currently have the luxury of having already one signed uh, for this month, and we have two more in the pipeline. And uh, we are all crossing our fingers that those two candidates will be also quite soon signing and that we have basically all three developers already at the beginning of the, uh, the, the quarter uh, in our team. And big shout out to Nadia for helping us a lot on that. UI components. Um, as you have heard in the last functional group updates, our idea is to really go a component-based architecture so that we have reusable components that we can work on and can really boost our performance uh, in productivity. Uh, what started as a simply CSS reflector that was the beginning of the plan for the technical team uh, was now re-evaluated after like one and a half months. Uh, how how fast it can go through the refactor and what we came up with is it, it is currently not an effective plan to do the refactoring first and uh, then afterwards go for the components. So what happened is that uh, the team was working on typography and markdown and now we made the decision and Clement is already very fast. We just got the update that uh, we are already in the final stages and uh, we are quite sure that we can do the upgrade in 10.8 already. So this means we are uh, converting uh, GitLab from uh, Bootstrap 3 to Bootstrap 4. What does this mean for us? This gives us the opportunity to use a component library that we will most probably choose, which is called View Bootstrap. And View Bootstrap simply gives us uh, all the components that Bootstrap has already as actual JavaScript components. So we can reuse them easily in, in View. And they are not just CSS classes, but they are something really uh, uh, reusable. And this is one part of our component-based uh, architecture. So we will simply will skin and style them so that they will work and uh, look like the components that we have in design.gitlab.com that was defined by the UX. And on the other hand, we will create our own GitLab-specific components like project avatars, user pickers, info boxes for merge requests, and so on and so on, so that we really have, like, we can put together a, a bunch of components and have easy uh, very easily and very fast uh, uh, new features that we simply stick together. Yeah, and other improvements that we want to do on the workflow that I also already mentioned last time, and one big thing is that Mike will be working on already in 10.8 is uh, upgrading to Webpack 4. Webpack 4 is a 
big thing in the JavaScript community at the moment because it's improving, of course, everything, uh, but it definitely will give us a performance improvements on build time, but also on execution time. I will take a look at the chat. Um, so, ah, there's, it's about the, the hiring. Uh, challenges, what are our biggest challenges in the next uh, month? Definitely one big thing that we are already tracking on a long time, but it is really one of the biggest, biggest, biggest refactorings that uh, GitLab has ever seen that Fatih and Simon are working on is uh, finishing the huge uh, merge request uh, refactoring for 10.8. Uh, all the work is done, uh, tests are done, and it's really now in review phase. Uh, it's really, really super fast. It's no comparison to the current merge request reviews. I'm really excited uh, as soon as we get this merge and we are really working hard to get this in now for 10.8 and get this to the ground. Uh, hiring the next three front-end engineers is already down to two, which is great. So because we hired one, uh, structuring the team and sub-teams, this is another big topic as we are growing and growing and growing. It's definitely uh, a very short-term and mid-term plan to basically structure also our team uh, in sub-teams and have uh, sub-managers in place. And this is one of the big challenges in the next months uh, and this quarter. Uh, yeah, and hitting the 100% delivery of deliverables uh, so that we are really able to focus and really uh, are able to deliver actually what we uh, promise to deliver and really uh, reach a much higher percentage there and so that uh, the PMs uh, will really get everything that they, all the things uh, that they requested. And yeah, introduce the reusable UI components. I think this uh, is definitely a challenge, but will be a huge advantage for overall because it will boost our productivity by uh, a multiplication, let's call it this way. Yeah, and that's it from my side. So looking forward to your questions. If we are so ahead on our OKRs, uh, do we get or at the hiring OKR, do we need to pick a new one? Uh, good question. Uh, we we opened up the, the, the hiring pipeline for a very short time. Uh, we already got some applicants. We will also look through them and, and we also get back to them. Let's see, uh, as we really saved a lot of time, as Nadia wrote, there are a lot of applicants for the front end uh, thing, so that we save a lot of time. So yeah, why not get another OKR and, and do a, another one? But perhaps let's, I would say, let's concentrate first on the other two. Uh, uh, and as soon as we have also achieved them, we can find in something uh, more or simply not deliver just three components, but deliver 30. <laughs> If we use view bootstrap components, is there a risk that we will end up overriding a lot of it like we have done with the standard CSS bootstrap? Uh, no, uh, I hope not. It's really uh, what we will do with view bootstrap is that we are then not tackling uh, CSS classes anymore. We have really, really like a, a component that has different attributes. You can't change anything to it. You really are forced to use a component in the first place. And the idea is to basically reset our whole CSS strategy from that moment on. And my long-term plan is really that if someone wants to change CSS, uh, they, they need to fill out first a 10 pages form before they are allowed to change anything in our CSS. So the, the, as Clement also wrote now, it's really, it's encapsulation of, uh, of the components. So the, uh, we are not, uh, saying anymore at this CSS class or this CSS class, we simply say this button is is representing uh, danger. That's I think one attribute that is called in Bootstrap and stuff like that. So you are not able to go around uh, much uh, as as it is easy with CSS, for example. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> exactly. Any other questions? If not, then I'm closing it at four, uh, three, two, one.
Thank you very much, everyone. See you on the team call. Thank you, front end team, and thank you for listening. Have a nice day.